Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our service at summer, of summer praise here from St. John's. If you don't know me, my name is the Reverend Sean Beagley, and I am the curate here at St. John's. Um, whether you're joining us online or in person, you are most welcome. Before we start our service this morning on this, the 10th Sunday of Trinity, we do have a notice. Corinne, are you there? To Thank you. Good morning. Uh, this week is holiday at home. Uh, this is designed for the older members of our community and it's three afternoons this week and I have some flyers here. If you'd like one uh, afterwards, uh, come and grab me or I'll leave some in the link. So everything starts at two o'clock in the afternoon. On Tuesday we have musical entertainment. Tap your feet or sing along as our wonderful accordion player entertains us with familiar tunes from home and abroad, then indulge in a scrumptious cream tea. <laughs> Wednesday afternoon, reminiscing. Now this is basically come along, perhaps with an item to show, and talk about a day or an occasion in your life that was very memorable. And then a delicious full homemade afternoon tea. Um, afternoon off on Thursday, and then on Friday afternoon, the film show Love, Sarah, followed with ice cream and a cup of tea. So do come along. Anyone who you know who might be an older member of the community who'd like to join us, please, please do take a flyer and, and encourage them to come. It's all free, and they, they are all welcome to come and have fun. And it's really designed perhaps for older people who maybe don't get to go away on holiday anymore. So this is their holiday at home. Thank you. Oh, hang on. Why am I running to Mike? I've got a mic. <laughs> that was just to add, if anybody needs transport, there is the possibility through Windlesham Caring. Um, so please do get in touch with Windlesham Caring if there are any additional transport needs required. Is that right? Well, usually we do it within the group. Oh, well, but within the group. But please do get in touch if you need transport. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Shall we still ourselves before we come before our Lord in worship, prayer and praise this morning? May the light and peace of Jesus Christ our Lord be with you. The Lord bless you. And we say together our opening prayer. Let us bring ourselves to God, whatever our age and gift. Let us prepare to share in worship, giving thanks for all that God shares with us. Let us open our hearts and minds to know more of God's unconditional love and care, and let us be ready to share it with others. Amen. So let us begin with our opening song of worship, He Who Would Valiantly Be. Please stand if able.
So let us sit as we come to our time of confession. And just a gentle reminder before we come to confession, there are wiggle packs available at the back of church for young people and older people alike, if you feel like colouring through the service. Um, there is also the Sanctuary of the Olive Room. If at any point you need to duck out, you're very welcome to see the service in the Olive Room. Uh, it is available, but please don't worry about noise or anything like that. We uh, love the children being here. So let us come before our God in confession this morning, aware that God is a loving Father who forgives all who truly repent and come and honestly say sorry. Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have failed you. We ask for your mercy and your help. Our selfishness betrays you. Lord, forgive us. Christ, have mercy. We fail to share the pain of your suffering. Lord, forgive us. Christ, have mercy. We run away from those who abuse you. Lord, forgive us. Christ, have mercy. We are afraid of being known to belong to you. Lord, forgive us. Christ, have mercy. So may Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and set you free from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in God's love and goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. The prayer for the 10th Sunday of Trinity. Lord of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, give us patience and courage never to lose hope, but always to bring our prayers before you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So let us stand once again to praise our Lord with the words of one more step along the world I go. Please stand if able. <laughs>
please do be seated as we come to our scripture readings. The first reading is taken from Psalm 85, verses 8 to 13. I will listen to what the Lord God will say, for he shall speak peace to his people and to the faithful, that they, shall not, that they turn not again to folly. Truly his salvation is near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth and righteousness look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed give all that is good and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him and direct his steps in the way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand if able. Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. All glory, um, hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus walks on the water. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, it is a ghost, and they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat started walking on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed a strong wind, he came, became frightened and beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Good morning. Please do take a seat. I'm just going to pray quickly before I begin. Father God, we gather in your name. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will meet with us this morning, that we will learn from your word and your message, that we will get to know a little bit more about you and what it meant, means to follow you. Lord Jesus, we pray, give us the words to hear your voice this morning. Amen. What a great passage, Jesus walking on the water. 
Um, I'm sure many of us have had that experience, not walking on water, but perhaps uh, maybe in a parent-child relationship or a teacher-pupil situation where you've been asked to do something. Usually in our house, the conversation is around tidying a bedroom. Maybe if you're at school, it's about completing a piece of work. And you're about to get on and do it, and then you suddenly wonder, why? Why should I do it? Why am I doing it? So you dare to ask. Perhaps if you're the, uh, on the receiving end, you dare to ask the enforcer, why? Why should I do this thing? Why should I tidy my bedroom? And the dreaded response comes back, because I said so. And usually what this means is there is a good reason, but we don't have time to get into it right now, and I just need you to do it. Well, the gospel passage we just heard this morning, when I read it for the first time, I wondered if there was an element of because I said so from Jesus. What do we know about Jesus this day? Well, that day, that evening, it had been a long, tough day for Jesus. If we read back in Matthew's gospel, we learn that, he'd, uh, that Jesus had just learned about the killing of his friend and his cousin and the preparer of the wage on the Baptist. Emotionally distressing for him, I'm sure. And only later on in the day to have a crowd gather and he ends up feeding the 5,000 and the women and the children. I imagine Jesus was desperate for some time alone. Perhaps some time with just him and his father in heaven. Some time to reflect, to withdraw and pray. And what Jesus does to achieve that is that Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go. Because I said so. Now I'm fairly sure that these disciples wouldn't have wanted to get onto the boat that evening. After all, a number of these disciples were fishermen. They were professionals at reading the weather. They would have read the weather and known the conditions. And I imagine the conversation went a little bit like this. I'm sure they said, "Uh, Jesus, it's quite choppy out there. Can we stay on the shore for the night and maybe go out in the morning? Jesus, no, get in the boat and go. Disciples, mm, it's getting quite rough, Jesus. I don't really want to. Do we have to? Jesus, because I said so, just go. Now, ultimately, maybe the conversation didn't go like that. We will never know. The disciples got onto the boat. And I don't think Jesus made them do it just because he said so. There was some deep-seated reason. Perhaps the reason this time was that Jesus sent them into the storms of life. Sometimes he sends us into the storms of life. Because he's, not because he seeks to punish us or do us harm, but because often it's in the storms of life that gives us the opportunity for Jesus to meet us in a more profound and deeper way. Perhaps those of us uh, in this building this morning have been following Jesus a little bit longer through the thick and thin of life may well have been through some of those tough times, some of those times where we have felt Jesus in a deeper, more profound way more profound way. Um, I'm just going to share a little story about my life and one of those storms that I went through. And it's something I can recall really vividly. It was when I went to start university. Um, I was 19, I think. Um, I had spent the preceding year on a a gap year, on a Christian gap year. Um, And whilst that was great, I had spent the year surrounded surrounded by people who looked and sounded a lot like me, who had a very similar life view to me. Um, and before that gap year, I'd, I'd been at home uh, in my childhood home and going to the church that I grew up in. Now, for the first time, this was the first time in my life that I had actually felt really alone. And I didn't realize it at the time. And I remember I arrived, like everyone does at university on a Saturday afternoon, with a bootload of stuff, my parents eagerly dropping me off and getting out of there as quick as they can. And I met so many new people that afternoon, there were so many new faces and names and experiences. We went out on Saturday night and we had um, what was a very fun and good Saturday night. But what the world tells you is when you're university is that you will meet these people and these people will be your friends for life. And I remember thinking how daunting that was. And I woke up the next morning, and I'm not really a morning person, I remember waking up incredibly early on that Sunday morning and I just felt terrified. And to, to this day, I can't really explain or understand that emotion, but I just knew that I needed to go to church. 
And for me, as long as I've known the days of the week, I've always known that Sunday has been church day. So I did the only thing I knew what to do on a Sunday morning, was I found where I, my parents had locked my bike the day before, and I cycled down the road to the first random church that I came across. And the moment, the moment I stepped through the doors of this church, someone was wearing a lanyard, and they said, welcome to church. And I just burst into tears. It wasn't a reaction I was expecting. I don't think they were either. Um, and I kind of pulled myself together, said hello to a few people, and went and hid in the corner. And then 10 minutes later, the worship, the musical worship, started in the church service, and I burst into tears again. And then it happened about 15 minutes after that when the sermon started, and then at the end when people tried to come and talk to me over a coffee. And actually, they, were, they weren't tears of sadness or pain, but actually tears of knowing that uh, church is family. That Jesus was meeting with me in a profound and exciting and different way. And what that did that morning, it almost laid the foundation for those first few weeks and months at university. The time in my life where I felt incredibly close to Jesus, but often the time in the life when I didn't expect to. That admission of fear and loneliness allowed me to meet with Jesus deeply in those weeks. And don't get me wrong, whilst experiences like this have been life-giving and profound and fulfilling, storms are tough. Just ask the disciples. We know that Jesus didn't go out onto the water until the morning. These disciples were being battered all night long, perhaps six, seven, eight hours, fearing for their lives on a little, little wooden fishing boat. I bet in those moments, during those moments, they thought this was it. They were done for. It was over. But then, later that night, early in the morning, Jesus came. So if this first main strand from today's gospel passage was obedience, then surely the second must be fear. So often there are two sides of the same coin. They live in this sort of tension of, on the one hand, I know I should, but on the other hand, I'm scared of what might happen. Perhaps you can relate to that with a phone call or a conversation, something you've been putting off for a while. You know you need to do it, but you are scared. Fear is debilitating. It can be blinding. When the disciples saw something on the water, some shape on the Sea of Galilee, they were terrified. The fear had blinded them. They cried, it is a ghost. A man who they had lived with and traveled with, who was their close friend and teacher, and they didn't even recognize him. The fear had blinded them. And how did they deal with fear? How do we deal with fear? Well, I think firstly we have to accept that we will all have fear. It's okay to be afraid. It's a very human emotion. And actually fear keeps us safe at times. It makes us aware of difficult situations. But what follows from Jesus is this beautiful arrangement of language. Jesus called to the disciples across the water, across this stormy expanse. We don't know how far away he was, but they could hear him. And what he doesn't say is, take heart, do not be afraid. He says, take heart, it is I do not be afraid. It's in the center of it. Jesus is. He says, between taking heart and being courageous and not being afraid on the other, he says, it is I. And honestly, I think this is a really intentional phrasing from the gospel writer that's been translated into English. Jesus chose to put himself right at the center of it. How do we overcome fear? Well, Jesus gives us the answer. In fact, he says he is the answer. It is I. Let's put him in the middle of our fears. In the last 48 hours, we've seen another six desperate, scared people lose their lives on a boat, trying to reach the UK in stormy, unforgiving, crowded waters. It almost feels twee. Uh, inadequate to stand here and say let's put Jesus at the center when people dying on boats is so real I would love to give you a nice cheery summary sermon wouldn't that be nice and I strongly believe no matter our political biases and afflictions and what we really think about stop the boats 
but the outworking of putting Jesus at the center of our lives, choosing to be obedient means having a heart for justice. That means not standing idly by when atrocity after atrocity hits our news screens every week. Firstly, and foremostly, we must pray. We have to be people in all things who petition for peace. To pray for those who are fleeing wars, who are only fleeing wars to putting themselves in moral danger. We must be people who petition peace. Maybe you feel moved to write a letter to your MP, support a charity that supports refugees. Because politics aside, there is always a place for compassion, for mercy, for being Jesus when we see others living through the storms of their lives. But back on the Sea of Galilee, we saw Jesus beckon Peter out of the boat. It wasn't complicated. He simply said, come. There was no big long list of instructions or rituals he had to follow. He just said, come. And that probably doesn't mean that Peter wasn't still afraid. I'm sure he most definitely was. And Peter probably didn't understand what would happen next or how it would work, but Jesus commanded it, so Peter obeyed. I would encourage you this morning that you do not have to understand completely to obey immediately. Let me say that again. We do not have to always understand completely before we can obey immediately. And that is our challenge as people of God, that although we may not fully understand the situation or the storm, or the circumstances that us or others may be facing, Jesus is still calling us to come, to offer ourselves and our lives to his service, to say yes, to obey when Jesus calls. And when we have doubts, because we will, and moments when we wobble, when we find ourselves starting to sink below the surface of the water, like Peter did, take heart knowing that crying out to Jesus, Lord, save me, just as Peter did, we are promised that Jesus will immediately reach out his hand and pull us alongside him and walk alongside us. And when we experience that compassion, that salvation, perhaps for either the hundredth or the first time, our only response is to worship, just like those disciples did. So the ultimate act of worship on the Sea of Galilee 2,000 years ago was obeying him, and that is still the same today. So as the psalm that we heard this morning said, I will listen to what the Lord God will say, for he shall speak peace to his people and to the faithful, that they, not turn, that they turn not again to folly. Truly his salvation is near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him. They said, truly, you are the Son of God. So let's get back into the boat this morning and worship Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Paul, for that challenge this morning. Let us stand together now as we declare our faith together using the words of the creed. Please stand if able. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Sorry, my tablet is... Uh... Gentlemen, are you all right to take control? Thank you. <laughs> Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our nature, died for us, and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So let us...
be seated as we come to our time of intercessions. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. We give thanks for the leadership in our church in Windlesham, for Jonathan, Sean, Kate and Kate, our church wardens, Joe and Hannah, the members of the PCC, and all who give of their time and energy in serving this place. As many take a well-earned break at home or away, we pray that they will have peace, a chance for refreshment and a safe return. We give you thanks, Lord, for the time Sean and his family have shared with us. We've been truly blessed by his ministry and we ask for your blessings on Sean and Jen and the family as they prepare to serve you in another place. We thank you for the time and dedication for all those working on the many initiatives to serve you better in the community. We give you thanks for the holiday at home events and those that give up their time to organise and run them. We also pray for the dementia CAF, the people that the CAF will serve and those working hard to make it happen. There are more opportunities than people and resources available we ask you to challenge and inspire us to be open to take a step of faith. For we know that when God calls, God equips. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As Hurricane Dora sweeps the Pacific, we pray for those caught up in the devastation, for those made homeless by the wildfires, for those whose livelihood has disappeared as tourists cannot visit. Guide the emergency responders and all those working to restore life. We pray for all impacted by devastating war. Especially we pray for Ukraine and for Niger. Almighty Father, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of all, we ask that you govern the hearts and minds of those in authority and bring the families of the nations, divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin, to be subject to his just and gentle rule. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for all those who are suffering at this time for whatever reason, through illness, loneliness, sadness, fear, for those who are struggling financially, for those who find it hard to cope with everyday life, for those who've lost a loved one. We ask that you may comfort and strengthen them. Guide us in ways that we can provide support, encouragement, and be able to walk alongside them in their pain and to help them. Lord, this week the church has had the privilege of hosting a funeral and a wedding, demonstrating shared love in very different circumstances. Be with us all as we journey together and help us to show your love to all those we meet along the way. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Shall we stand again, if able? We are the body of Christ. In one spirit, we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us greet one another with a sign of God's peace this day. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace. 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 And peace to all who join us via the live link this morning. Always thankful for spare tablets. <laughs> we remain standing for our next act of worship uh, in our offertory hymn when a collection will be taken, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Please remain standing. <laughs> The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Lord of all life, you created the universe where all living things reflect your glory. You give us this great and beautiful earth to discover and to cherish. You give us friends and families, busy streets for young and old, the life 
of an earthly city fulfilled in your city to come. You made us all, each wonderfully different, to join with the angels and sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We give you thanks, loving Father, because when you turned away, you sent Jesus, your Son, he gave his life for us on the cross and shows us the way to live. Send your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us Christ's body and his blood. On the night before he died, when darkness had fallen, Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, broke it and shared it with his disciples saying, this is my body given for you, do this to remember me. After they had eaten, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and shared it with his disciples, saying, This is my blood, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. So, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate his love, his death, his risen life, as you feed us with these gifts, send your Holy Spirit and change us more and more to be like Jesus our Saviour. Help us, Father, to love one another as we look forward to the day when suffering is ended and all creation is gathered in your loving arms. And now, with all your saints, we give you glory through Jesus Christ in the strength of the Spirit, today and forever. Amen. Please be seated. And let us pray as our Father has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus, we come to this, your table, not because we are strong, but because we are weak, not because any goodness of our own gives us the right to come, but because we need your mercy and your help, not because of anything we have achieved, but because you died for sinners. Glory be to you, our living Saviour and Lord. The table of bread and wine is now ready, so come to this table, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more. You who have been to this communion often, and you who have not been for a long time. You who have tried to follow Christ, and you who have failed. Come, it is Christ who invites us to meet him here. If you do not feel able to partake in the elements this morning, then please do step forward for a blessing, and just approach with your arms crossed. Thank you.
the body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. post-communion prayer for the 10th Sunday of Trinity. God of our pilgrimage, you have willed that the gate of mercy should stand open for those who trust in you. Look upon us with your favour, that we who follow the path of your will may never wander from the way of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray together the prayer after communion. God of truth, we have seen with our eyes and touched with our hands the bread of life. Strengthen our faith that we may grow in love for you and for each other. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us stand for our last hymn of praise. Lord, for the years, please stand if able.
we remain standing as we draw our time of prayer, praise and worship to a close. I uh, just would like to invite you all to join us following the service for a time of fellowship. Tea and coffee will be served in the link, so please do remain with us if you can. Loving God, you know through and through. You know our hopes, our fears, the things that get us going and those that make us freeze. Give us the courage to put our anxious, fearful thoughts and feelings aside, to listen to you and to get out of the boat, our eyes fixed always on you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the joy and peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you.